Oh, it was huge. It was it was yeah. life changing for me. I'd literally that day fallen through a roof and I was in a hospital bed and I'd been fine the whole day. And then Bev and I was messaging back and forth and he was giving his life to God. And at that point, I'm just streaming tears. It was so emotional. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by Two Brits and a Bible. Today is day 30 and we're going to be covering Exodus 36, 37 and 38 today. In Exodus 36, the children of Israel bring too many offerings for the sanctuary and construction begins. In Exodus 37, Bezalel makes the ark and various furnitures. And in Exodus 38, Bezalel makes the altar of burnt offering and other details. Nice. I want you to start off with your joke straight away. People aren't going to find it funny. Um, It's funny, dude. Right. Is it ah uh, no, it's it's been set up as a joke. It can't be considered a joke. Ah, oh, you've ruined it. Um, that wasn't really a joke so much. And I was gonna kick off with it anyway. You touched on it to begin with the uh, children of Israel bringing too many offerings. And mm. it, it caught me out really because I, I read through it and I was I sort of thought Moses is having to tell people to stop bringing stuff. They've got more than they need. And it just made me think I've been a Christian my whole life. I've been in more churches than I can count. And not once have I heard a pastor ever say we're not taking an offering today because we've got <laughs> enough money. Like it just doesn't happen. There's and yes, right. there's always a need. There's always more that's being done. The church is always, you know, using the money wisely. But mm -hmm. yeah, and no point have I ever heard someone be like, thanks guys, we've got enough. You put your checkbook away, young man, or your credit I've... if you want to make it 21st century. So audience, I've known Adam for, you know, I would say 30 years near enough now, 29 to 30. Crazy, isn't it? He's never made a joke better than that. He's a funny guy. <laughs> That's the best joke I've heard out of him ever. And I totally agree. It's so true. So, so true. Um, but yeah, that's not to say that tithing isn't very important and that donating to your church and giving generously isn't a good thing. It's just, you're right. This this never happens. Yeah. Um, and I think it's inspiring. I don't know if I mentioned this the other day, actually. I had a note about, you know, the Hebrews, the Israelites, they've had a really hard life. They've, you know, worked backbreaking labor for Pharaoh in basically slavery conditions. Yeah. They've then been marching around, you know, the, the wilderness. And yes, God has provided for them, but it's not been easy. And it's just inspiring to know that they are giving everything that is needed they're contributing all the skills that they can i just i just love that and then to add on to that um there's the beauty of all of the work that they're doing right the posts of acacia mm -hmm. wood the overlays of gold the golden hooks the silver bases so this is all exodus 36 36 and i just said as slaves they worked to glorify pharaoh but now their work glorifies god and it reminds me of uh, saul becoming paul you yeah. know i think that's a huge thing so all of the things that saul did as a christian were basically very similar to the things he did as a christian hunter but they just were glorifying god rather than trying to destroy god's people yeah um, massive, man. i like that and it it you know a, a part of my experience that is obviously different from my fellow adam here is that adam has grown up in the church i found christ two years ago roughly and um well I feel like I spent my whole life glorifying myself, basically. And it's great to see some of the changes God has already worked in to me, where I am now trying my best to glorify him through what I do rather than just glorify myself. And um, just a side note, which since I'm being a bit soppy, I also think that the audience should know that Adam prayed for me uh, pretty much throughout his whole life that I would become a Christian. And it was amazing the day that I gave myself to Jesus. And, and I think it was overwhelming for me but it was also pretty overwhelming for adam here oh it was huge it was it was yeah. life-changing for me i'd literally that day fallen through a roof and i was in a hospital bed and i'd been fine the whole day and then bev and i was messaging back and forth and he was giving his life to god and at that point i'm just streaming tears it was so emotional um yeah, yeah absolutely wild dude and yeah. it's so true i've seen it in your life mate since then and the work that you're doing now and it it's literally so we have been recording this podcast like three or so weeks ahead as of right now we've literally been live for two days two podcasts have actually been released 
And I was just checking the analytics earlier and I saw that there's the kind of typical uh, downloads and interaction from the UK, from Canada, from America, like places we are. And I spotted that there's two downloads that have come from Turkey, which is just so random. And my wife, Melody, she was like, that's huge because actually that's a that's a pretty shut off nation right now. You're not allowed to openly be a Christian. And the fact that the work that is going on through this and thank you so much to those that are listening and sharing and downloading and everything. But Bevan, like the fact that you were like, like you said, did pretty much most of your life to, to glorify yourself, which is kind of what we touched on with the, the Ten Commandments and being selfish and no God above yourself, above God and stuff like that. But the work that we're doing at the moment here that God's called us to is is impacting lives that would never previously we've been able to get close to touching. So it's yeah. just such a huge thing. And literally, thank you so much to those that have been listening and downloading and sharing and, yeah. and engaging. Basically, it is, it's changing lives. It's bringing, it's bringing the gospel to people that wouldn't have necessarily been able to access it in this way by two idiotic Englishmen. <laughs> And that was the vision after all. That actually links quite nicely to the next thing I had to say, possibly the last thing I had to say from uh, today's readings, uh, Exodus 38, 14. The curtains that are 15 cubits long, which were on three sides of the tabernacle. And this is not my own work. This is something I saw in a study. Um, but the fact that the entire tabernacle is lined with curtain material shows the malleability of the Jewish church at that time. And also perhaps foreshadows the fact that it will expand over time include the gentiles over time when jesus comes and so on and i think that um you know the work that we're doing um is all equally trying to be malleable right we're trying to have an audience from all over the world yeah. and there's that that lovely sort of flexibility to the internet that we've been provided to to share ideas yeah. and so on so it's so exciting to to be part of something like this and yeah as as adam said just thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us and our ramblings <laughs> and please pick up your bible and actually do some reading and research for yourself yeah, for sure for sure um so i'm gonna tie us back into the bible here as well and in uh, exodus 37 where whatever they were called oh, i wrote it down bezalel and aholiab are busy making all these things and making this table out of acacia wood and they're making it like several feet long and high and overlaying it with gold and everything and mm. they are doing this to such a high standard and god's obviously given the ability but i mentioned it briefly yesterday i enjoy making stuff i'm actually i can say it now because by the time this goes out my sister's wedding will have been and gone i'm making her some uh, placemats some epoxy river placemats type thing they're literally sat over there i could go get one if i had time um but I want to call everything that I do like Peter's is imperfect pieces because no matter what I do, I screw something up. Nothing's perfect. Nothing's as it's meant to be. There's always a little chip here or something's gone wrong there. So the fact that they were able to do all this stuff to that level where God demands it to be perfect is huge. And the thing that really blows my mind is I'm doing all this with power tools, right? And that's why I have like cuts on my fingers and stuff and plasters. Um, but these guys, are they're doing it with... They'll, they'll have tools obviously but but the fact they're doing all this literally their own blood sweat and tears going into this is just next level and it is so 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 impressive like they couldn't get it slightly off they couldn't they couldn't nice. you know, super glue it and clamp it back together and fix it like if they made the wrong cut on this acacia wood throw that one on the fat sacrifice fire we've got to start again <laughs> oh man it's it is it's inspiring isn't it yeah exactly. and, and they're doing all this in the heat of the desert as well is just to add another layer of complexity to this you know these these are these are badass israelites right here and it's all because god has made them badass so you're right you should just uh pray a bit harder that he can help you to use your power tools a bit better mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh Smashing. Um, one last very minor thing in here. It says in here, obviously, they're bringing all these massive amounts of gold and silver and the talents of silver used, et cetera, et cetera. And that sounds like a heck of a lot. But actually, I was reading a study and when you break it down, the amount of Israelites that left Egypt, they only would have each needed to have had a small amount from what they brought out of Egypt to make it 
realistic for what they have yeah. so it's kind of mm-hmm. kind of manageable anyway i leave yeah. it now i think thank you very much for listening uh if you want to engage visit the facebook page two Brits in the bible or please consider liking and subscribing to help spread the word of god thanks guys